Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today we're going to use mirror acrylic, bone acrylic, and a couple of tips and tricks to make this sign. I'm going to be using XCS and I just want to tell you if you're new to my channel, I don't like fluff. So I would recommend you go into your YouTube video settings, go to playback speed and choose anything above normal if this is going a little fast for you. Again, YouTube video settings, playback speed and anything above normal will slow it down. So I'm going to open up a new file in XCS 2.0. I'm going to either hit the T at the left or T on my keyboard and type out a couple of lines of text. So I want a sign that says you are magic, my dear, for the nursery. You know, I just think it's a cute little idea. Plus very muted colors is going to look adorable. And then I kind of want the positioning to sort of be a nice cloud like structure. I know it's weird, but trust me, it'll all come together. So what I want to do is I want to position this in general where I want it to go. And now I want to change the font. So I'm going to be using a paid font. This is called Milk and Honey, and it has beautiful alternates. If you're not sure what an alternate is, it just means the letters look a little different um, in some of them. So you can see it here in Illustrator. It's very easy for me to do. I'm going to show you how to do it with XCS 2.0. So what we want to do is we want to go into our font manager or font book. Every computer has one. Every program has one. You basically just want to look up your font, scroll down to where the alternates start, which is apparently quite extensive with this. There we go. So you can see there's some alternates here. So I can make a choice on what why I want. And this U code, I need that. So I can copy the numbers or hit this copy in font book. And then I'm going to highlight the Y by double clicking inside this text and copy or and pasting in what I copied. And you can see here, this is all ready for us. I'm going to do that with a couple of other letters like the R for an over in this word. And I'm going to do it for the combination of G and I. So some font uh, designers actually make these really cool font combos that help you just add a little extra stuff without a whole lot of work. So once I have all of the alternates I like, I'm just going to look and see. I'm going to move stuff around and see about alternatives. So I don't like how this looks with the word my. So I'm just going to move things around, try and look and see if I like it, or just I'm going to go ahead and delete it because I don't need it. So now because I made a D separate, I made the Y separate. That's just copy and paste, by the way. I'm now going to go and grab a shape in order to balance this out. There's a whole lot of shapes inside of XCS that you can use, and these are done for you vectors. However, it doesn't mean you can't adapt them. Now, I like this star, but I do not like how blocky and pointy it is. I want to soften it. It's for a nursery. It's going to be in something very rounded. So I'm going to go into Edit Node, which is over on the right-hand side menu. If you want to zoom in, you can hit Command Plus on your keyboard, or you can use the zoom at the bottom right. Now, either way, you can come in here and double click. I know, don't worry about that. If it freaks you out, hit Command Z or Control Z to undo. But you're double clicking all of these points. It's going to round them out. You, there are different options for you up at the right over there. But you can even pull these transform controls down to sort of get it the way you want. We zoom in. We look at it. We see if it's what we want to zoom again. Command or Control Plus on your keyboard or the bottom right. I think that's okay. Once we like it, we hit done. You see how that better resembles a nursery style sign? A little softer to go because we're going to create a nice big rounded outline. So I am going to copy and paste these stars and I'm going to use the transform control at the top to rotate them. Again, you can use copy and paste by right clicking or copy and paste on your keyboard. So I'm just going to move these over. Now this is going to be 100 dependent upon your design. And if you want this file that's already done for you, maybe I can put it in the link down below. I'm not sure how to do the XCS files that way. Maybe I can just link it out to uh, Google Drive. But basically, once you're looking at your design and you see that, you know, I kind of like this. It's a little unbalanced over here with this big blank spaces under magic, I'm going to tighten up a little bit more in here and just making sure I'm within those outlines. 
So there's something called kerning, which is the space between the letters. You can adjust that right here in the live font, or you can copy and paste each letter and adjust it manually. I'm going to mirror the distance between the D and the M up here between the U and the A. Once I'm happy, I can move any individual letters I have around, move my stars, and now I have this really big blank space down here. In design, we want to add accents and threes and fives, and so now we're, we're rounding out this design here at the bottom. You could also weld this magic, go into the node management, and drop that G down as well. Um, just whatever you want to do. I, I really recommend you get in here and play with this. I'm gonna group all these stars together in case I move something accidentally. It'll be easier to move back in. And you can see that in the layers panel at the bottom left, I can also lock it, I can hide it, I can change the layer color, whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and group this and then I'm also going to unite because we don't want live text in our finished designs. So you can see this is now a vector because we combined united it and you can see I'm just putting it on red because red is cut in my brain. I'll move this one to blue just so that I can decide later whether or not I want to cut them out of a different color. So now we want to add that poofy little background, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create an offset by using the outline feature inside of XCS. We've highlighted everything, turned off the inner outline for bitmap, and you can use the slider or these arrows or just type in whatever you want, 7.4 or whatever I decided on. We hit OK and that adds this nice little outline here all the way around. Isn't that cute? Be sure to hit OK because if you don't hit OK, it doesn't lock it in. So I'm going to go over to Canvas here and call this working. I'm also going to add a notes file. I do that for myself. Original notes, settings, etc. and a test file. So in my original over here, I'm just going to create some notes for myself telling me what fonts I use, what offsets I used. In case somebody wants a matching sign, I'm just also going to identify my materials and I'll run my test on my mirror acrylic. So I always recommend you manually save your files because they don't auto save inside of XCS. So you can see there was something else in my um, thing here. I'm going to run the test on a very small piece of masked rose gold mirror acrylic. It is backwards and we've mirrored it. I'm going to show you that this sign is very small as we've designed it. So I moved it to inches in the settings so that we can make sure I want a five inch tall sign. Again, this is a prototype. The actual signs will be much larger. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on output wise what I want, make sure everything is set to cut, and then I'm going to go ahead and set my cut settings for my mirror acrylic um, that I'm going to be using. So again, I already did my testing. You will have to use yours, but I'll put my settings down below. You have to mirror your design. So you saw me do the horizontal mirror and that is because we're going to mask the front of this. We're going to add tape on the back of it and the design is actually going to be cut face down, meaning it's backwards. So I'm just adding masking here. This is paper masking from Amazon. On the back here, I'm going to add 3M467 MP. This is so we don't have to glue anything. I'm super lazy. Also with mirror acrylic, some adhesives will actually remove the mirror, so we don't want that. All right, so now that we've got our settings in, I'm actually going to refresh here, and you can see there's my piece. I had to manually type it in because my lights, I'm on a honeycomb, so I'm adding 1.5 millimeters. Now after my distance is in, I'm going to close shot camera this on this right hand side and the very top so I can make sure it's in place. Then I'm going to right click to remove that and I'm going to go ahead and hit process. You can see it's backwards here. When we hit start on our computer, you can see that it's going to give you a little error message because of the speed that comes up now. It's okay, don't walk away. I put on my uh, respirator when cutting any extruded acrylic like this because it's not, it's not good for you. Turn on your inline fan. It only takes a couple minutes and this is all cut through. You can see it's perfect. So we are going to, after it processes in the machine, you'll get a little notice here in XCS 2.0. And now we can actually either flip that back around or don't worry about it because we're going to now cut that design out of cardboard. So you're going to want to center uh, horizontally and vertically. Now, 
I messed up. You're going to save this again, by the way. Always save. I messed up because apparently at one point, I actually um, loaded in my cardboard. See, there it is. Did my distance measuring. See, good job, girly. I even will input my settings. <laughs> um, but some reason, I turned off my outer outline. I don't even know when I did it, but I turned it off, meaning output was off. Mm -hmm. So... Now, I'm going to tell you on your settings with cardboard, here are mine. I am on a honeycomb, uh, so I need you to be real careful with cardboard. Most of the time, I don't run it at 100, but on the P2, it, it's really easy. I run it at 100. I don't worry about it. And you can see here, I am missing the outline. Didn't even notice until I cut it out of the actual cardboard. All right, so now I'm going to turn that portion off, turn the other portion on. Ay, 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 and refresh because I'm going to load masked on only the bottom of this beautiful bone one eighth acrylic from Houston acrylic. It's very, very pretty. You can get it from CMB, uh, Smoky Hill, wherever, but we're going to make sure that it's on output. We're going to have it on cut and we're going to enter our settings. Once you have those settings aligned, you're just going to put all of your settings in your notes file, just in case you want to recreate this as well. And now guess what? We position it with the close or close up camera and we go again. So this will cut in very little time and you can see it's perfect. It barely even looks like it's cut. Love the curve. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead final again and save this again. I promise you, it'll be good. All right, so now it's to the actual assembly. Because I forgot to cut off my thing, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is line up one letter and then everything else aligns. So I'm just gonna tape this on and I'm actually gonna tape it to the desk. I just find it a little easier to tape to the desk. You can absolutely like this, just put it in individually, but I'm gonna go ahead and tape mine to the desk. And then I'm just going to pull off, after I load the whole thing, I'm gonna pull off the 3M uh, cover and pop them right in. Bloop, bloop, bloop. All the way. Now, this part is super fun. Put on a good audible book or some music and just go at it. It's really fun. They do well on social media too. If you're a business and want to share little assembly videos, this part is really nice sped up. So I'm using a piece of Gorilla Tape. However, I am going to take off my cardboard and just pull all of this off. It's just a little easier. I use Novus Acrylic Cleaner just to wipe everything down, making sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm going to remove the paper masking on the back. And guess what? I added a hanger and this one is now in my craft room. I hope this was helpful to, for you to create your first sign like this. Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafting fun.